Are you headed out for a ride and you wanna know how to get your bike or ATV in tip top shape? Well, these are my top five prep tips before riding. So today I wanna to share with you guys some tips that I have. You can call it a checklist of really things that I like to go over on my motorcycle before I go out and ride. You can do this for your ATV as well. It doesn't matter what type of riding you're doing, whether it's motocross, if you're out the desert, trails, it makes no difference. These top five tips that I have are gonna help one, keep your bike in tip top shape. They're also gonna help prevent any damages to your motorcycle. And it's also gonna keep you safe as a rider. Now, before I get started, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. The obvious, you wanna make sure you have plenty of gas in your bike, your ATV, make sure you have the right amount of oil in your bike. And also you wanna make sure that your coolant is topped off as well. Those are simple, make sure you have that done. But the first tip that I have is gonna be checking your bolts. What I like to do is sometimes I'll do this the night before just to save a little bit of time, but I like to go through and just check all the bolts on my motorcycle for my radiator shrouds, my pinch bolts, my axle nuts. Really, I just go through the entire bike and I just wanna make sure everything is snugged up. You can even take a torque wrench, check some of the bolts that need to be torqued to spec to make sure those are still good. And it's really important because I've seen a lot of things come loose and come off of motorcycles and ATVs while people are riding. I've seen Kickstarters come off. I've literally seen a rider have his rear axle nut fall off and his axle come out. That did not end well. So it's really important just to go through, make sure all your bolts are snugged up. Now one really important one is if you recently installed a new sprocket or if you're about to, Sprocket bolts, you wanna make sure you have Loctite on there and it's important you wanna pick up some new bolts and nuts when you're putting those on. But if you are using Loctite on your sprocket bolts, those shouldn't come loose. However, I have seen that happen before and it does some serious damage to your hub, so you wanna make sure you are checking those. Now when it comes to checking your bolts, it's very simple. You just wanna pick up some inexpensive T-handles. These are our Tusk brand. You wanna make sure you have good axle uh, wrenches. So we have a few different options. You can get some that come with both your 32 or both your front and your rear axle sizes. And also, if you wanna kill two birds with one stone, one that I really like to have is I always take my tire spoons to the track with me in case I get a flat and need to change out my tube or tire. And these Tusk brand, What's nice about these is they actually have your axle nut sizes on the end, so it's just easy to kill two birds with one stone. But that's gonna be my first tip, is just make sure, go through and just check all your bolts and just make sure everything is snugged up. So for my second tip, it's gonna be chain slack. It is really important that every time you go a ride, you have the correct amount of slack in your chain. The reason being, if it's too loose, you can get chain slap, which is when your chain is hitting your swing arm. That could actually wear out your chain slider quickly. And also, worst case scenario, if it's too loose, it can derail and come off your sprockets. On the, other, on the flip side, if your chain is too tight, that can actually wear out your sprockets quickly. And also, I've actually seen chains break because they were too tight, because there's too much tension on there. And a lot of times when chains break, they'll actually damage the case of your motor and those are definitely not cheap to replace. So it's really important, you wanna have the right amount of slack in your chain. Now, a lot of riders out there like to use a three finger rule, where what they'll do is they'll go to the end of their chain slider and they say if they can get three fingers underneath their chain between the chain and the swing arm, that's the correct amount of slack. This works, but you gotta keep in mind, every bike is gonna be different. So it's really important to look at your owner's manual because they will give recommendations of how much slack you should have and also where you should be measuring that. Now, one tool that I have that I really like to use that's for me is much more accurate and it keeps it very consistent, is a slack setter from Motion Pro. Very simple to use and it just gives me that peace of mind that every time I measure my chain slack, I know it's consistent and I know it's right where it needs to be. So that's my second tip, is make sure you have the right amount of slack in your chain. So for my third tip, it's gonna be checking your spoke tension. It's really important, just like with your chain, you don't want your spokes too loose or too tight. If they're too loose, that's what causes your wheel to be out of true, and it gets real bad, it can do some serious damage to your rim and also your hub. And on the flip side, if they're too tight, that can actually also cause your wheel to be out of true, and you don't wanna have too much tension on your spokes. Now, if you recently put on a new set of wheels or a new hub, it is very important, especially that you check your spokes after the first few rides. They almost always tend to come loose, so it's very important to go through and be checking those after the first few rides. Now, when it comes to how tight your spokes should be, you wanna look at your service manual because they will give recommendations. Most bikes, if you don't have your manual, are gonna be around 40 to 50 inch pounds of torque. Now there's a couple of tools that you can use to adjust your spoke tension. The first is gonna be the one that comes with just about every motorcycle. These are great, they do the job. However, the hard part is you don't know how much torque you're using when you're adjusting your spokes. So what I like to recommend, what I always use is a spoke torque wrench. We have a couple of these to choose from on our website. 
The great thing about these is you know you're using the exact amount of inch pounds that is recommended for your spokes, so you're not over tightening or under tightening them. So if you don't have one, highly recommend it. They are a little bit more expensive. However, like I said, gives you that peace of mind. You know that you're torquing your spokes to the correct specifications, which is really important. So that's gonna be my third tip, is make sure you are checking your spokes and tightening those if it is needed. All right, so tip number four is gonna be with your tire pressure. You always wanna be checking your tire pressure before every ride. And another thing you wanna keep in mind is a lot of riders will actually set their tire pressure the night before. Now, one thing that's really important is when you show up to wherever you're gonna be riding, you gotta pay attention to the temperature because PSI will actually fluctuate or change if the temperature is rising or if it's dropping. To give you a great example, I just rode the other day, started out at 45 degrees in the morning before we rode the track. So I set my tires to 12 and a half PSI and I actually went back and checked my PSI three times throughout the day and each time as the temperature was rising, I had to let out a full pound of PSI. So a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is that for every 10 degrees, either rise or drop, in temperature, that's gonna be about a pound of PSI in your tire. So if it rises 10 degrees throughout the day, it's about a pound more PSI you're gonna have in your tires. So that's why it's really important right before your ride and throughout the day, you wanna be checking your PSI to make sure it's consistent. And you don't wanna have too low a PSI. If you do that, you can damage your rims, you can get pinch flats easier. If you have too much PSI in your tire, well, your tires can deflect, you're gonna sacrifice traction. So you wanna have it right where you need it. So that's why it's important to check it throughout the day. Now, when it comes to tire pressure gauges, we offer a lot here at Rocky Mountain. Motion Pro makes a really cool digital tire pressure gauge. One that I've been using for a long time is this Tusk Pro Caliber, inexpensive, and it's always worked really well for me. So that's gonna be my fourth tip, is you wanna make sure checking your tire pressure before you ride and then checking it throughout the day. So for my fifth and final tip, my last item on the checklist, it's gonna be setting my sag. Now, if you're a weekend warrior, I really don't feel like you need to be doing this before every ride, but definitely every few rides you wanna be checking and setting your sag. But if you're putting in a lot of hours during the week, say 10 hours or more, then yeah, it's really important you wanna be checking your sag often because it will move Okay, once you set it once, it's not gonna stay there. Now the reason that I say that setting your sag is so important is because sag has everything to do with the balance of your motorcycle. Too much sag, your bike can squat and feel like a chopper. Too little sag and your bike can feel that stink bug feel. And when it comes to adjusting your suspension, your forks and your clickers on your shock, well, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good to start adjusting those if your sag isn't set correctly. You gotta have the balance of the bike set first. So when it comes to doing that, you wanna make sure to look at your owner's manual because they're gonna give you a recommendation of where your sag should be. Every bike and every rider is gonna be a little bit different, so don't ever just hop on somebody else's bike and assume that it's gonna be right for you. And now checking that, if you've never done it, you're not sure how to adjust it, we have a how-to video. We show you step-by-step -step how to check it and also how to set it. Now there are some tools that you can use to do it. You can use a tape measure, you can use a ruler, or a really easy way is just go get a sag scale. These make it easy, they take away some of the guesswork, you don't have to do any math in your head. Very easy, very precise. But that's gonna be my fifth and final tip, is you wanna make sure, check your sag often, make sure it's where you need to be, and again, do that before you start to mess with your suspension. All right guys, so there it is. Those are my top five items on my checklist that I like to go over on my bike before I go out and ride. Now there's definitely not everything that you could do to your bike or your ATV, so if you have other suggestions, make sure to comment below, share those. That's gonna help your other fellow riders out. To see all the parts and accessories that we talked about today, you can click on the link or head over to our website at rockymountainatvmc.com to shop those. Remember, orders over $75 ship free. And if you haven't yet, make sure to click subscribe to us on YouTube. That's gonna keep you up to date and in the loop on the latest gear guides, product reviews, and how-to videos that we are constantly rolling out. I'm Chase here at Rocky Mountain, and we'll see you on the trails.